Okay, so we're still talking about ball mills, and um, mostly because I wanted to do a whole lot of reactions with them and I've been looking at them, and they're quite expensive to buy. So I thought I'd go through a few methods of how to make them. Now, in the previous video, the ball mill that we made actually has restrictions on it in terms of the amount of speed that you can get in there, and therefore the amount of energy you can get in there. So this video is about a different form of ball mill, uh, which we mentioned in the previous video as being the centre axis ball mill. And essentially, it's just a cylinder with an axis going right the way through the centre, your motor directly attached to there, and then some kind of pivot point there. Now what this means is that this um, thing will spin at whatever your motor speed is, and given that most modern motors are sort of the two to 3,000 RPM range, you get quite a lot of spin in there. Now the problem with this one is it takes um, quite a bit more machining to um, get it right. Um, because the, speed, the spin speeds are so high, if you do make mistakes in it and you get it off-centre, then the whole thing is going to vibrate and it, and it will break. It, it will fall to pieces very, very quickly indeed. So you need to have um, some capability with machine tools and you need to have some availability of machine tools. Now, I, I've got a few machine tools. I have a lathe, for instance, and a fill a drill and that kind of thing. So getting things centred and getting things um, circular isn't such a problem. If you don't have those tools, it's next to impossible. So you're going to need a bit of a, a machine shop, or you're going to need to do some shopping around for some preformed bits and pieces, and again, they're likely to be expensive. It's not really something you're going to be able to make from um, a coffee can and a jam jar. But certainly the previous one you can make with hand tools, but this one you're really going to need some machine tools. Now, I'm only going to make um, the, the centre axis and spin the thing up. But um, one modification that you can make quite easily to this is if you put some paddle blades in there. Now these paddle blades are just bars of steel, so you'd get a bar of um, relatively thick steel, say a quarter inch, uh, cut it into lengths. This is going to be about 100 millimetres in diameter, so those lengths would be about 90 millimetres in length. And then at the centre you would drill a hole put it onto here, put a bolt out of the side, pin it, and then those would stay still. Now, you're going to offset them, so if you're going to put three in, then they would look like that, so that when this is rotating, the um, grinding medium that you put in here will really just get whacked around in there with a great deal of energy and uh, impart that into whatever you've got in there. So, that would be the... Um, Ideal, I actually can't remember the name of that, but there's a specific name for this setup, and um, that's what we're going to go ahead and make now. Okay, so we talked about one way of making a ball mill, and uh, we made an example of it, and this uh, is example two. Uh, this is the um, other way of making it, where we put a central rod. Now, I happen to have a piece of this, which is a bit of 4-inch stainless steel pipe, and that's going to be the body of the ball mill. And in order to get that to be a ball mill, in the first method that we talked about in the previous video, what we need to do is have some kind of central rod going there. And I've got a bit of this, which is 14 millimeter uh, threaded bar. Now I've already done a little bit of work on this and then I've turned off the end here so that that will go into the drill and that's the, the bit that's going to turn it and I've turned that end there and put a centre in it because the cradle I've got has got a live centre. So I'll put the live centre through there, the drill through there and that will be turned. Now if you don't have a live centre then you can turn that down to fit um, the size of your bearing that you happen to have and you could also put a bearing at the other end and attach your drill there to when you make your cradle. Now when I've um, finished machining that, what I've done is put a couple of nuts on it and those nuts are going to tighten down whatever it is that I use for um, the plugs at the end here because I'm going to make two plugs, pop them on there, tighten those nuts down and that will make my centred drum and then I'll pop it in the cradle and spin it up and that will make my ball mill. Now the problem with this is that when you spin that, these nuts have a tendency to um, want to unwind, want to loosen, uh, because there's a great big old weight in there, it's spinning very quickly, and effectively what happens is the weight holds those nuts still, and the whole bar 
unthreads and it'll unthread and loosen up and everything will spill out. So you don't want that to happen obviously. So what you need to do is lock one of those nuts down. Now um, a bit of Loctite will certainly hold it in place but it won't be good enough because uh, again it's a lot of weight and a lot of speed. So what you need to do is drill a little hole through there right through the centre going all the way down and put a steel pin in there and when that pin is in there that nut will then be locked nice and firmly. Then we put a big old metal plate on there, big washer, then we're going to put our um, certainly a cut piece on plug on there and then we'll feed it through another plug and then we can tighten that down. Now you don't need to lock that one but you do need to make sure that when you spin it it spins in the direction that will tighten that down. So it'll spin like that in that direction and that will tighten down and because this one is locked the whole thing will actually get tighter. Now obviously there's a limit to how tight it can get because of the plugs that you've got but it will hold it tight. So the first thing you need to do um, with this is drill through there and put in a pin, which is what I'm going to do now. Okay, so you can see what I've done here. I've um, put the pin through there, as I said I would, so I drilled through the centre and I used a bit of brass. Uh, no real reason, I had some brass lying around, it's easy to cut and easy to beat, so I put some brass pin in there. And um, then I cut a blank, which is this circle here, and it's cut from something called Builder's Board. Uh, builder's Board is PVC with a polyurethane foam in the centre, and it's really quite nice to shape and use. So I cut a blank like that from Builder's Board, and um, put a steel washer on, a bit of super glue, steel washer on there, tighten the whole thing down and put it in the lathe, and span it so that you get this conical shape. And the reason you get this conical shape is when you do it with the other one, and you put them both in there and tighten it down, it will self centre that drum. So the next thing to do is to shape this into the conical shape and then screw it onto there so that that drum self centres on the two cones. Now the only problem with Builder's Board is the polyurethane foam here is um, porous. So what I'm going to need to do there is either paint it with latex to seal it up or resin or uh, put some rubber on. Now I'm probably going to glue on a strip of rubber so that again when those things are tightened down that rubber will press against this and form a seal. So that's where we are and that's what we're up to next. <coughs> so here they are, um, turned down, so that's the second blank made and I've put some rubber tape around it as I said. i put some rubber tape around there and that goes in there. You would fill it then with the bits and pieces that you want to. Line that up. Then tighten that down. What you've got there is a self-centered drum that will rotate. Now you put that into the cradle, that goes into the drill, that goes into the centre and you spin it up, which is what we'll do next. So welcome to my shed. Okay, I inherited this cradle actually, this thing here. It was sold as a um, drill lathe. You uh, put your drill in there and you could use it as a wood turning lathe. I actually have used it as a wood turning lathe and it's pretty good. But it's available for this thing at the moment anyway, so I've decided to use it for that for just now. Um, if you don't have such a thing, then you can make a very similar wood cradle to the one that we made in the previous video. And now we've got that all um, centred up and um, fastened together, and we've got our four inch drum here attached to the drill, nice and firmly held. Then we just can turn the drill on. Now it's going to be a bit noisy, so I'll turn it on and turn it off again. <laughs> And there you go, one ball mill that will uh, rotate at 2800 directly uh, with a central axis. Now the good thing about the central axis is if you want to, you could put um, pieces of metal on like that, centre drilled, quite thick. And then as the whole thing spins, those bars of metal will whack the balls up and um, give you even more impact energy in that um, arrangement. So there we go, another simple ball mill arrangement. 
This one took quite a long time considering what it is and I haven't made the cradle either. I've just made the, um, the actual canister because of all the trouble of having to centre it up. But there we are.